Oh. Um, I guess she's a little stuck right now, huh? <laughs> what is happening? Oh my gosh. Is, is this for real? What is up everyone, Munching Orange here and welcome back to Pokemon Sword and Shield. Before we get to today's episode, in which of course we're going to be taking on the Spike Muth Gym, I actually wanted to add some new Pokemon to our team for this gym challenge. And first off is going to be Snom's Evolution. And if you didn't know, Snom actually evolves by maxing out your friendship with him, which means we've got to play with it in Pokemon Camp, if it can make it to us. That literally took a whole minute, but finally, Snom is close enough, and now we're gonna wag this little feather toy thing around until we max out its happiness. I'll probably do a guide later on on how to max out happiness on your Pokemon the fastest, but basically you wanna play with them until they get tired, and then feed them some curry to reset their tiredness, and then you'll be able to play with them again, so rinse and repeat, play with them, feed them curry, then play some more, and eventually you'll start seeing little hearts pop up on your Pokemon when you talk to them in the camp. And once you see three little hearts pop up, that means your Snom is ready to evolve. You don't exactly need max happiness or friendship on it, but three hearts means that you've done enough. So we're gonna end off the camping and Snom will grow to level 45 and is going to be evolving. I like how you can hear the raid in the background too. Very ASMR. But into the light you go, little Snom, and become the Ice Queen that we always dreamed of. Frost Moth. I should probably mention that you have to level it up at nighttime too, because the first time I did this, it didn't work out, and it's because it was day out. But this is the Frost Moth Pokemon. Icy scales fall from its wings like snow as it flies over fields and mountains. The temperature of its wings is less than negative 290 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about as cold as it is in my apartment right now. And with these new Pokemon in hand, we are finally ready to take on the Spike Month Gym. But let's actually show them off real quick because I've added another little runt to our party and that is Mucha Lucha, the Clobopus. If you can remember that TV show, then bonus points to you. At this point, it is kind of old, or maybe I'm just old, but I've given it the black belt as well, which will power up fighting moves. And right now it's got Brick Break, Bulk Up, Taunt, and Revenge. Now, Clobopus actually evolves by having the move Taunt and leveling up. So thankfully it's already got that, like right when we caught it. Uh, but we've also got Mothra here, the Frost Moth. And I've updated her moves as well. Now has Bug Buzz, Blizzard, Tailwind, and Infestation. So unfortunately, some of our OGs are going to be replaced. I think Violet and Robin are sitting out for this gym battle. But I really want to check out Frost Moth. I think it's a really cool Pokemon. And I also want Mucha Lucha to evolve so that we can see Grap Locked since all the ones in the wild were at level 50 and we can't catch him. So let's transition into the gym here in Spike Muth, which is probably the least traditional gym we've had so far in the Galar region. Everything's been all proper and in stadiums, but here we've just got a bunch of hooligans on the street. Gym Challenger, you want to get past me, but I won't. Don't want that. Basically, it's a battle between our desires. Well, my only desire is to get our 7th gym badge and move on to the final challenge of Galar, which I guess is going to be Ray Han over in Hammerlock. Technically, that's not the final, final challenge, though. We've still got the Pokemon League, of course, but he's going to start off with a Linoon, and I think Mucha Lucha here is pretty slow, or not, as our Revenge is actually going to hit first. I thought it was a decreased priority move, but I guess maybe Linoon went for an even more decreased priority move. I don't know, I'm not sure what happened there, but either way, it's four times super effective, and the grunt will go down. You and your Pokemon broke through. That's right, Mucha Lucha off to a great start. I don't want to let you through. That's why I was waiting all squeezed in this crack. <laughs> but since I lost, it was really all for nothing. Whatever, you won, so I guess I'll step aside. Well, there's another grunt right there. I guess she doesn't want to battle, but as I predicted last episode, it looks like the whole town of Spikemuth 
is actually the gym mission itself. And I'm kind of sad that we can't explore any of these buildings or even interact with any of the posters or anything on the wall. Uh, which we actually have some Chairman Rose posters up there. And I guess there was a sweets shop or like rare candies or something. What are y'all up to? Mr. Mime is a dancing Pokemon. It makes for a cheery member of our team. Who's going to have a Mr. Mime on their team? Oh, okay. I guess that's who they meant. This is giving me some Detective Pikachu vibes right here. Oh my gosh, it literally is an invisible wall. Come on, Mr. Mime. We can't get through no matter how hard we try. So what the heck are we supposed to do then? Oh, I guess just take a step back. What's this? A gym challenger made it through. All us Team Yell members have blocked the way. Don't think we'll just let your walls through. Oh, I didn't expect anything of you guys. But wait a minute. How did I just realize that Team Yell are literally wearing their gym uniforms? Like, this is the uniform for the Spike Muth Gym. It doesn't look like a traditional, you know, gym uniform, but they definitely got the gym logo there on their chest, like, on the jersey. And even though they're also Marnie fanboys and girls, I guess this is kind of their uniform. I don't know, maybe I'm making a bit of a stretch here with it, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Either way, this girl's gonna have a Thievul, which is also gonna go down to our revenge. And I guess we'll confirm my theory when we get to the gym leader. Or debunk it. I wasn't able to properly greet you. But we got Mr. Mime for that. It's all good. That was totally unbelievable. Even my Pokemon are in awe of you and your team. Here, go on through. Check out our neon signs while you're at it. I'm already checking them out. They look pretty cool. I just wish that I could actually go in some of these buildings or that it was an actual town, you know? It is a cool concept, though, uh, to have a whole town as the gym. And that's what she meant by the neon signs, huh? Can we take a seat, though? <laughs> Why am I getting a My Neighbor Totoro vibe right now? Waiting on the bus to nowhere. Alright, that's enough loafing around. Let's keep moving forward. If you got a burger shop over here... Oh, jeez. We got some grunts up on the windows, too? I'm yelling for no reason! Whoa, relax! Man just broke a leg for the gym mission. Did I surprise you? I'm a little surprised how my legs hurt from that landing. If I stand like this for too long, it'll hurt so bad I might cry. So I'll shake it off with a battle. Alright, the double tag team, team yell, grunt duo. I'm surprised it's not actually a double battle. There's been like barely any double battles in this game. If any, actually. I think the only double battles we've had are tag battles where... We have, like, Hop along with us. So, I don't know. It's kind of weird. I do miss Double Battles. Even though they weren't ever really, like, a super staple of the series. It's nice to at least have some of them as opposed to none at all. Uh, but this guy here is going to have a Scraggy with a scary face. <laughs> Look at that face, man. That is the face of a Stone Cold Killer right there. Good luck sleeping tonight. But we're going to finish it off with a Brick Break. It decided not to really attack us, so I don't know. Even after lowering our speed. Or wait, I guess we were slower the whole time. But it wasn't able to do much. And Mucha Lucha is one step closer to evolving. I lost. My legs pains back. So it's a double shock. That's what I wish you guys would have done. A double shock, double battle. Well, it's true that I lost. But I pushed through the pain. So you should praise me for that. Alright, now that the pain's gone, I guess I'd better get out of here. Dang, that man healed up faster than a Pokemon Center. What? What? The other one's just gonna run away, really? Okay, I have a feeling he'll be back. But for now, we can pick up a Max Revive here. And that reminds me, I should probably heal up our Clobopus before we head any deeper into Spike Muth. Don't want it fainting on us on the road to getting that Clobopus. Or wait, Grapplocked. Oh my gosh, I always confuse the names, but Mr. Mime is once again blocking the path. And as we walk back, the HP of your Pokemon not looking so good. Oh, whoa, what the heck? I practiced that back handspring so much, even a pop star would be jealous of those moves. Were you surprised? Oi, be surprised, you! While you're in utter shock, I'm gonna sneakily win this battle. Once again, we got a double team of yellow grunts, except they're not actually gonna double battle us, but this one's gonna have a Weavile, okay. Bringing out the evolutions today, I like that, because it'll give us more experience. 
and also because it's a dark and ice type, which means that our fighting moves will be four times super effective, and Mucha Lucha is going to tank up the slash there to get his revenge, or her revenge, I mean, because Mucha Lucha is a girl. I guess you could call her Buena Girl. I'm pretty sure that was the name of the character in Mucha Lucha. Uh, but there we go. Level 45 is going to give us superpower. Okay. That's a very strong fighting move there. And I guess we might as well grab it in exchange for Brick Break. Because, you know, Revenge is a decreased priority. So I guess it's kind of different. But Brick Break is just a standard move. So superpower is basically just a superpowered version of it. Seriously? You've got to be kidding. It's over already. Whoa. Whoa, indeed. As we're going to get... Clava Puss to evolve! Mucha Lucha! Mucha Lucha! Mucha Lucha! Mucha Lucha! Specializing in grappling moves, the Jiu Jitsu Pokemon, a body made up of nothing but muscle, makes the grappling moves this Pokemon performs with its tentacles tremendously powerful. <laughs> That's actually such a cool concept I didn't really think about, but of course it's going to be learning Octolock upon level up, the signature move of Grapplock. Just like any good wrestler, of course you got to have your signature move, but what are we going to get rid of for it? I guess Taunt, now that we're evolved, we don't really need that anymore. Uh, of course you need Taunt in order for Globopus, Clobopus, oh my gosh, I actually do keep forgetting the name somehow, but... I should have been practicing my battle skills, not my backflip skills. Thanks for showing me that. Guess I'll cheer for you from now on. What? You're just giving up on Marnie like that? Okay, at least they exit the stage in style with their backflipping. And Mr. Mime is gonna run away. Okay. Oh, we got some more signs and posters. I mean, uh, guitar shop by the looks of things. Yes, traffic cones. I want to steal it. But I guess we can't. So we'll just head into this building. Whoa! Team Yell takes the field! This might be the gym challenge, but I won't let you ruin our cool secret hangout! Alright, time for a pincer attack! We'll do whatever it takes to win! Oh wait, does that mean we're actually gonna have a double battle this time? Oh! I didn't have enough time to get my disguise ready! Oh my gosh, look at him! He's wearing like, regular Yell clothes. That's right, Team Yell is actually made up of Spike Muth gym trainers! Wait, so my theory was right! Heck yeah, dude! And we're also going to have a double battle, finally! Everything, all of my predictions are coming true today. And I'm so glad, because, I don't know, I miss double battles, you know? It's been a while since we've had one. I don't even know if we've had an actual double battle in Sword and Shield that wasn't, like, tagging along with another character, but I wonder if Play Rough will be super effective on Drapion. I guess it's regular effective, because it is a poison type as well, but it should still do some good damage. As Liepard's actually going to taunt us, does that mean we have to hit the Liepard now and not Drapion? I wonder. Oh wow, it's going to avoid the attack anyway, but we went for the Super Powered, and that is definitely going to overpower the Liepard there. Look at Mucha Lucha though, the way it's bobbing up and down like, I'm going to get ya. What a weird looking Pokemon, dude. It actually is like a rejected enemy from Splatoon. Or like, the final boss of Splatoon 3, if that ever comes out. I was gonna say, of course it's gonna come out, but I really don't know actually. I feel like Splatoon, it is popular, but it's not like, the most popular game. Like, the fans that it's got are diehard for it, but at the same time, I don't think it's like, mainstream, if that makes sense. They could still make 3 though, and I hope Graplocked is in it. Uh, but anyway, could have used Mothra in that battle. I just realized we haven't really gotten a chance to use her yet. Would have been better if you'd just lost to us. Wait, what? Did I lose as a member of Team Yell, or was I beaten as a gym trainer? Why not both? I got confused by what he said there, because... Ugh, whatever. Our gym leader's up next, but he's really strong, got that? I mean, everybody already knew the true identity of Team Yell, right? That means I won't get in trouble for not getting my disguise on, right? I sure hope so. I didn't know, that's kind of obvious now that it's been revealed, but I can't believe I didn't guess it, because the signs were always there. Like, the outfits are literally gym uniforms, uh, with the logo on their shirt and everything, but here we've got Marnie, shut your gob! What? Oh, orange! 
Jeez, we just saw another side of Marnie. Uh, I'm really sorry. The lot from Spike Mutt's telling me they locked down the city for my sake. How could they? Spike Mutt just keeps getting worse and worse, and all Piers is saying, don't worry. So, we decided to disguise ourselves as Team Yell and sabotage the other challengers. We thought if we could stop the other gym challengers from reaching the gym, then Miss Marnie would be the only one to win and make it to the Champion Cup. And we figured that it increased the chance of our wonderful Miss Marnie becoming the new champion. <sighs> That's no way to help someone at all. That's illegal. Orange, no need to bother with all the preparations or whatever. Go on in and face the gym leader. Oh, we're here already? Whoa, what's going on? We got a mosh pit. Okay, turn the gym to a mosh pit? I'm gonna be giving Piers my best yells during this battle with you. How about you, Marnie? You cheering us on? No need to bother with all the preparations. Okay, we're good. So I guess we've got to heal up our Pokemon before we head inside. Looks like Mucha Lucha and Nightcrawler sustained some damage. And I feel like I should actually put Mothra up first. Then again, the gym leader is going to have multiple Pokemon, so we could always switch out if uh, Mucha Lucha struggles. But what the heck? Why do we have a vendor or a stand over here? I'm looking for a Pokemon trade. How about your Obstagoon for my Cantonian Mr. Mime? Oh, so this actually is kind of like a town mixed with a gym at the same time. But unfortunately, we don't have an Obstagoon. That's really cool how they have like a Sableye shop up there and can't really tell what those other shops are. But let's join in on the mosh pit. Oh, yeah, we got peers on stage. Well, this is kind of awkward. Like, he should definitely be singing, but all we hear is booze right now. Maybe they're not booing, but that's what it sounds like to me. Whoa, look at that hair. So you're finally here, huh? I am here. See, uh, I'm really not a great gym leader. Figured that's why nobody was coming to challenge me. What? You're just gonna admit that, dude? I have good ears, so I overheard the whole thing about the city being shut up. When I was alone, it was like my soul was weeping. This is a simple gym stadium. We can't even Dynamax our Pokemon. But, well, I still hope you enjoy the battle. What? No Dynamax? Whoa, look at those shoes, though. The little skulls on the back. Little throwback to Team Skull. Got the peanut gallery in the back. Now then. Whoa. I'm the gym leader Spike Mutt, Piers, the dark type user. You wanna challenge me even though you know you'll lose? Then this song's for you, foolish trainer. Get ready for a mosh pit with me and my party. Spike Mutt, it's time to rock this shawty. I tried to make that sound like a rock song or a rap, but <laughs> it really didn't rhyme at all. So gym leader Piers, you're making this a little difficult for us. Especially with the fact there's no Dynamax Pokemon, come on. The whole reason why I nicknamed our Frostmoth Mothra was Everyone, cheer on my Pokemon! Let's do it, Scrafty! Intimidate the opponent! Oh, it's literally got Intimidate, I get it. But yeah, I wanted to Dynamax Mothra because then it would actually live up to the name Mothra, you know, the giant moth. Guess we're not gonna get a chance to do that, but either way, let's just take him on and go for our revenge. Or not, because Scrafty's gonna fake us out, okay. Well, if that's how you're gonna fight, then let's get another revenge going here as Scrafty goes for the sand attack. <laughs> Piers plays dirty, literally, because he's throwing sand in our face, but also dirty as in dirty fighting. Not the most uh, gentlemanly fight or, you know, cleanest way of fighting. I didn't want to say cleanest, but basically Dark type is known as kind of the dirty fighting technique, like... I know it's also darkness and shadows and all that, but I think when it was originally created, dark type was, at least in Japanese, I forget the name, but I think it's like evil type or something. So it's supposed to be like the opposite of fighting type, like dirty tricks and fighting, like sucker punching and throwing sand in people's faces. But Mucha Lucha is the most honorable fighter around and is going to finish off Scrafty with the superpower there. I guess that's the word I was thinking of, like honorable fighting, but He's going for Malamar next, which is a Dark and Psychic type, I think. And that means bug moves are going to be super duper effective against it. So let's swap out the Mucha Lucha and go for Mothra. 
and the music. I don't know why I actually brought along two new fighting and bug types and then also kept our old ones, but Malamar's gonna mess you all up with its contrary ability. Okay, just call it out like it is, Piers. Maybe that's why you're not the toughest gym leader, because you're literally telling the traders your strategies exactly. But uh, contrary, I believe, makes any stat lowering moves instead raise the Pokemon stats. But Bug Buzz just takes it out in one hit, so it's really not going to matter. And yeah, what I was saying is, we literally have our own fighting and bug type already in Artorias and Salsa. But I wanted to show off some different Pokemon, and since apparently Pierre's gym is not exactly the toughest one around, I guess it was the most appropriate timing. But Obstagoon's coming out next. Time to meet another member of my crew. Face the proud high roar of my Obstagoon. How fitting that the Rockstar Pokemon, the KISS band member reject or honorary member of Sagoon is also going to make it onto the Rockstar Gym Leaders team. And he's going for the counter! Oh my! Artorius! You're kidding me, right? This is why I don't like playing with my Pokemon in the camp. As it survives with one hit from just loving us, apparently. And I don't know why I went for first impression, but... Wait, what the heck? Are you kidding me? Is this really happening right now? Okay, well, I guess I kind of misclicked the first impression there, so let's finish it off with a knockoff. As bad as I feel, because we should not have survived that Shadow Claw, dude. What the heck was that? Literally tucked it out with one health after being at one health and is apparently going to be learning Slam now, so I guess we'll get rid of the knockoff that just helped us win. Say, knock it off and learn Slam instead. I just, I feel dirty now about that victory right there. Artorias should definitely be dead, but Pierre's final Pokemon is going to be a Skuntank, which I believe is a dark and poison type, so we don't really have too much to take it on with. I'll just go for Nightcrawler and hope for the best. I don't do encores, get it? Not songs, not moves, not Pokemon. Okay, I guess that kind of rhymed a little more. I'm liking his style. A Skuntank comes out and everyone's gonna stink, but who cares? Use your Sucker Punch and Toxic. You're really gonna call out your moves like that, bro? How did this man make it to be the last gym leader? Or second to last, I mean. Like, I thought the gym leaders battled amongst each other to see what order they would take on challengers in, and somehow Pierre's is the second strongest of them all. All right, well, we're gonna go for our play rough, and that is gonna destroy the Skun Tank, even if it's not super effective. The Aftermath will do a little damage there, but that's about the only damage Pierre's is gonna get on Nightcrawler. As we've taken him down. Yeah! Shout it out loud, Grim Snarl. Me and my team gave it our best. Let's meet up for battle again sometime. Devastated, dude. Should have had the mic drop there. Or wait, maybe he did. What was that sound? I'm glad we were able to battle. Seems like my Pokemon feel the same way. This dude is destroyed right now. Depressed. But hey, at least he's gonna shake on it, right? Here's your dark badge. I thought for a second he wasn't going to, but despite the dark and depression, Pierre's will give us the dark badge. Team Yell, no! They're so sad, man. I mean, what were y'all expecting, though? Here's a uniform, too. I've actually been thinking about just selling them at my concerts. You should, man, you know? Grow that fan base, sell some merch. My little sis Monty's gonna challenge me next, I bet. I knew it! It's literally her older brother. I said this last episode too. That was actually kind of sweet, was it? So you were watching, sis. You won't learn anything from seeing me lose. I was watching your battle, bro. It's how I learned to battle and all that. That right? That reminds me, Monty. There's something I wanted to tell you. I wanted you to take over the gym here in Spike Butt as its gym leader. Yeah, I know. Oh, did you? You'd plan to retire after the Champion Cup, right? I think you really become a great gym leader, even if you don't Dynamax your Pokemon. I love you, but my answer is a big fat nope. I mean, when I end up becoming champion, I won't be able to be a gym leader. 
Good point. In that case, let your big bro see if you have the skill to become a champion. Hey, Orange! Thanks for having an amazing battle with my brother. It's my turn next, so clear off for a bit, kay? Okay? Marnzition! You seriously beat Piers? Here, a TM to remember this moment! I'm surprised that they're surprised. That guy literally called out all his moves. Maybe he's that strong that even if he tells people exactly what he's gonna do, they somehow still lose, but we get Snarl, and now the whole town is snarling. Oh wait, that was the gate opening up, huh? There's some trouble over on Route 9. It's so bad, even the champions come to sort things out. Oh hey, you gave Piers a thrashing, didn't ya? You should head over to help. Come on then, I'll show you the way. Whoa, what is going on? So that wasn't the gate opening after all? Could it be another explosion? in the Gala region. Looks like it, but the champs got this under control, right? Orange, thanks for coming, but I've got a handle on this. Whatever's making that noise, I'll see to it. Keep your eye on the goal. And for you, that's winning the gym challenge. The only gym badge left is the one you'll get from the dragon gym leader, Raihan, right? Raihan's the only trainer out there I consider a real rival. He's that good, you know? Is he now? And there I go again. Sorry, but I suppose this is no time for me to be stopping for a chat. There's a bit of trouble here with my name on it, but don't worry about a thing. The unbeatable champion is here to look after things and keep you all safe. Oh geez, that seems serious dude, you better get to it. I mean, I wish I could help, but apparently Leon doesn't want us to. That came from the tunnel, wouldn't you say? Seems I'm about to have a champion time! Wait a minute, we saw like the tent back there, but it looked like it was just floating in the middle of the ocean. Or was I seeing things wrong? I don't know, but before we head on to the tunnel, I actually wanted to go back and get some hidden items that I missed here on the beach. I know, how could I miss items? Me, the great item sleuth. And I believe one of them was right over here. It's gonna be a normal gem. That's not really the most exciting item, I gotta say. Uh, but there was one more, and I don't really, really remember where it was at. I guess there weren't any more, but what we haven't got yet is a Delmize. And here we get another shot at catching it. Unfortunately, the quick ball didn't work out, but this critical capture definitely will, as finally, we're gonna get Delmize registered in the decks. The Sea Creeper Pokemon, after a piece of seaweed merged with debris from a sunken ship, it was reborn as this Pokemon. Now we can move on to the tunnel at last, and I'm assuming back to Hammerlock on the other side. What's this? The earth is shaken. Maybe if I try to sway in the same way. Nope, not helping. What does that even mean, dude? Gotta stop, drop, and roll. Or wait, no, that's for fires, right? Not earthquakes. I hope everything's okay in Hammerlock. I hope so too, man. The cape with all the logos, was that the champ running by? Probably. Is he actually right here? Oh my gosh, Leon! What's happening? Why is there a wild Dynamax Pokemon here? What is this red light? Wait, can we not get past this? What's with all this cuckoo crazy shaking? <laughs> Alright, we can get past after all. And we're gonna go back to Route 7. Whoa, a Galvantula pops up too, and Orange! I mean, Hop, what up? This is mad! You know what I mean? What? The loud noise? What was it? That's what I'd like to know. That noise, it was like some massive explosion. There was this huge surge of red light, and then wild Pokemon just started Dynamaxing around me. Brazen as you like. Wait, is that what the explosions have been all along? Wild Dynamaxing? Take a look at the news. Whoa, a Dynamax per circuit out of nowhere? See, there's Lee. He really is the greatest, right? Dude, this is like Attack on Titan. The Pokemon are just randomly turning into Titans. Lee and his Charizard took down that Dynamax Pokemon in the blink of an eye. I knew Lee was strong, but this really makes you appreciate how great he is, eh? Let's go meet up with him, Orange. He should be at the Hammerlock Stadium. That's right, the site of our next gym mission. The final one. I wonder if there's actually any Pokemon that we haven't caught here. Or hidden items or anything like that. And actually, a Seismitoad is gonna pop up, okay. Well, I wasn't expecting that, but Mucha Lucha, you can grapple him down to size, right? Hold him down for the Pokeball. It's only at level 37, so hopefully our Quick Ball works out, and we don't even have to deal with battling him, but... 
Oh, come on. How did I know that was going to happen, man? That's unfortunate. And Mucha Lucha is not even going to go down. Okay, you know what? I'm out of here, dude. I don't feel like battling you anymore, Seismitoad. I'm sure there's plenty of those in the wild area that we can probably take on as well. But for now, let's head across the bridge and back to uh, this area. Oh, wait, we actually haven't been here before. I acknowledge your strength. Please indulge me in a contest of strength and new wits. Oh, you want a little Baritsu fight out here, gentlemen, Kaden? I'm actually so glad I looked that up after the episode because it was like one of the most fun facts I've learned. It was one of the few fun facts that was actually fun to learn. Like the fact that it's a gentleman's martial art. Basically, you can imagine people in suits and holding umbrellas like this guy is actually getting in a Baritsu fight. But this guy's got a Dewblade actually. And I don't even know what it hit us with there, but it was definitely super effective. So I hope our false surrender is enough to take it down, and it will. So this Baritsu fight goes to me, gentlemen, for Bartitsu, I guess is the official name. I don't really know why there's two different names for it, because the guy in the Pokemon world called it Baritsu, but when I looked it up, it was Bartitsu. Maybe they didn't want to have that word in the middle there be part of a Pokemon game, because, you know, it sounds like something else, but... Anyway, Passimian comes out, and just as quickly as it came out, it goes down, as his final Pokemon will be Poltegeist. Okay, I think this is actually the first time we're ever fighting one, and judging by the fact that our moves don't show if they're super effective or not, I think confirms that. But we know it's a Ghost type, so the False Surrender will definitely crack that pot. And that is it for Gentleman Kaden, I think was his name. How fitting that he had a little teapot as his Pokemon, too. A true gentleman to the T. Exactly as I thought. And finally, we've got another camp. Yay! My brilliant little Maragnar is the best. She gives me berries that she's found when we camp together. Do your Pokemon do that? I guess it must be proof of how friendly she feels towards me. My Pokemon are all so very sweet and such good friends. Come play with them, too. Alright, let's do that real quick. Because I'm really curious what the heck uh, Maragnar is. Sounds like it would be a new Pokemon, but what? <laughs> She's literally just got Meowth in her camp. Oh my gosh. Is Maragnar the Alolan Meowth, I'm guessing? That's cool that they actually have an Alolan Meowth in here. And actually just made me realize that there's three different versions of Meowth in one game. That's crazy. But this is Mialola. Oh, that makes so much sense because... It's from Alola. Alright, well, you're not Maragnar, so is, is that you over there? The Cantonian Meowth? Get over here! And you, stay, okay? Don't don't go anywhere while Meow seems to be worried. Oh my... Really? It's just Meow? No, don't go anywhere! Hey, Mialola, we're not done here! Oh my... Meow, no! You're not going anywhere either! Can we not have three Pokemon at the same time? Get over here! Oh, wow, okay, I guess we can't have three at the same time. I wanted to have all three different Meowths together, but I guess that's not possible, so whatever. Which one are you, anyway? Meowrotter! Oh my gosh. I want my own Pokemon over here now, okay? Mucha Lucha! That's you! Get over here! Oh my gosh, look at that! Oh. Um, I guess she's a little stuck right now, huh? <laughs> what is happening? Oh my gosh, is, is this for real? Is this really happening right now? Okay, well, I guess we're not gonna get to play with our <laughs> Mucha Lucha after all, so we might as well get a little cooking in. This is hilarious though, like, how long is this gonna last for? I'm assuming until the Meows are done fighting with each other. I actually just wanna keep this going forever. This is gonna be a thing, but... Okay, finally, wow. <laughs> Mucha Lucha's gonna make her way to us. And since you came all the way here, I guess we might as well talk. Whoa, that's your mouth? What the heck? I guess we could have checked out her mouth if we cook up a dish as well. And you already know I'm about to throw in all the rarest berries in here. All the ones that I've got one of, I guess. And, well, that's about it. So let's just throw some greppas in there too. It's time to cook it up once again. Oh, I forgot there was actually... Wait, what? There was another person still? Oh my gosh, look at all the berries we throw in. That's so unfair, dude. You guys gotta start 
pitching in some more on these berries, you know, but all right We got four people in total here fanning the flames Which means we can get probably the biggest flame possible if we just keep fanning as fast as we can. Oh my gosh No, don't burn it everyone stop the meows are getting mad Uh. Okay, well we kind of overcooked it for a little bit there, but I think it should still be fine Hopefully we get a Kaparaja class even though it was a little bit too hot there, but now we got to get the stirring in and What I was gonna say is I didn't see the third trainer like I know there was the lady that owns the Meowth and then that little kid on the right side, but Okay, well clearly our timing is off there. I don't know how we get the giant flame I think everyone has to throw the heart in at the same time, but that time it did not work out and it looks like there was a little girl there, too. Maybe her grandchildren or something. As we make the sweet salad curry. Will Mucha Lucha like it, though? Yes! Oh my gosh! This is like the best dish we've made ever! Holy moly! The Charizard class! Oh, what? I didn't even know that was a thing! Look at that! Gigantamax Charizard! Spoilers, dude! Come on! That was insane, though! Like, the way Mucha Lucha ate that thing! Wow! And why the heck do Nightcrawler, Mojo, and Salsa gain more experience? What? That was weird, but man, I did not think we'd be making a Charizard Clash dish! As I just noticed in the corner, a little TM hiding from us, and it is going to be Assurance, which is a Dark-type move uh, that apparently does double damage if we've taken damage? I'm just kind of marveling at the mountain in the background there. Or actually mountains, there's two of them, but I don't think we can go to either one. At least so far we haven't seen any mountains in the Gala region, which usually there's at least one giant mountain that you end up climbing in every other Pokemon adventure, but Gala has been pretty different so far, I gotta say, with the biomes and different areas that we visited. Everything feels a lot more compact especially looking at it there on the map, but very diverse at the same time. Like, we've been to deserts, we've been to snow, we've been through forest, fairy forest too, but everything has been a lot smaller than I guess I expected out of Pokemon's first experience on a console, you know, like the Switch, which isn't exactly the most powerful console, but still, I expected more, I guess. Over here, hey, we got the whole Galar gang, let's go. Well, if it isn't orange, I'd expect nothing less from you and your Charizard, Leon. Dang, this man is all smiles right now. You took down that Dynamax Pokemon in no time at all. Well, I am the unbeatable champion after all, but what all is going on here? An overflowing red light, Pokemon Dynamaxing without a power spot. Yeah, but why? I'm not sure. What's going on? That red light could suddenly appear again at any time, and we'd have no way of knowing. But being able to predict such things is part of a scientist's work. Magnolia? I mean, Gran? The chairman called for me. He wanted to know all about the Red Light's relationship to the Dynamax phenomenon. Did the chairman know anything? Nothing worth my time. The chairman's all wrapped up in fretting over the future of our energy, apparently. He's left everything to that executive lady. We just don't have enough data. That's why I... Wanted to ask you to start looking into things too, Sonia. You know more than anyone about the darkest day after all. Are you saying that red light and the darkest day are connected? Gasp! Hey, do you reckon there's anything we could do to help out? Uh, sure, why not? Do mom and dad even want our help though? Thanks, I appreciate the thought. But all I could ever ask of you would be that you join me in the greatest final match ever! I'll do my part to make that happen by keeping everybody's future safe. So you just keep on doing your part by winning your way through the gym challenge. Right, of course! You're the unbeatable champion after all, eh? Has Hop even gotten the seventh badge yet? Or his sixth badge? I'm pretty sure he kept losing to the Sir Chester gym. Gran, there's something I want to look into. You'll help me, right? Oh, what's that? Naturally! She going back to the hammerlock vault or something? Looks like we all know what we need to do, so you two, clear the gym challenge so we can meet again at the Champion Cup! Oh yeah! Can't wait, Leon! I know what I need to do, alright! Defeat that Piers once and for all! You're off to Hammerlock Stadium, yeah, Orange? Raihan's a tough nut to crack! 
Ah, so I guess he did beat the Sir Chester Gym after all. But Piers is next, and for us, it's Hammerlock. But that will of course be coming in the next episode, because that is going to do it for today. Hope you all enjoyed, and stay tuned, because we're having back-to-back -back gym battles. Although I did kind of want to have a wild area episode again, so let me know down in the comments whether you want me to take on Raihan straight off in the next episode, or if we should relax and maybe go explore the wild area, take on some of the Gigantamax Pokemon lurking there before we head on to the final gym in Hammerlock. And again, thank you so much for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed, and I will catch you in the next one!